Hey, hey, everybody. I hope that you guys are well. It is Regina Pugh. If it's your first time seeing my face, I am a prophetic voice of the Lord. Um, I have a ministry, Kingdom Builders Connection Global. I prophesy the word of the Lord, speak what's on the heart of God um, and all that good stuff. You can start by the website, which I will pin below in the comment section um, and in the description box. So I am here today, you guys. Let's talk about the elephant in the room, okay? Uh, probably not an elephant in the room, but it's something that I believe as people of God, kingdom of God, just like with anything else, we have to be bold about our stance for holiness and bold about our stance for righteousness. Uh, now is not the hour that we should cower. Now is not the hour that we should hide. Okay. Uh, God is looking for a people who will cry aloud and spare not. He's looking for people who he has transformed after his own heart. Okay. Um, you all often hear me talk about the remnant over here, this channel. Okay. Those that the Lord has called out those that he's preserved, uh, those that he has ordained for such a time as this. Like we're here, okay? We're on the scenes and we are bold in representing the kingdom kings, okay? We, y'all hear me say it all the time. We are the eyes, the ears, the mouthpiece of God. He needs us in this hour to take a stand for uh, the kingdom, to take a stand for the principles and the precepts of his holy word, okay? Okay. Um, so I have been thinking about this for probably over a month or so. Um, if I was going to talk about this and address it, because God had put some things on my heart, like in prayer, um, and even gave me, you know, some words for certain individuals personally. Uh, but I believe, so you, you saw the, the title, can you be same gender loving? Can you be homosexual whatever you want to call it, a part of the LGBTQ and still be a Christian. There's that word again, okay? Christian. You guys know that I don't really rock with the word Christian, okay? I identify as a kingdom citizen, all right? Because the definition that Holy Spirit gave me of what a kingdom citizen is, it is a person who is under God's complete jurisdiction, a person who's under the jurisdiction of the word of God, okay? We live by what the scriptures say. Okay, we line our lives up according to the word of God, all right? Uh, so we are kingdom citizens over here because we live in a day and time where the word Christian is very loosely uh, used. Everybody's a Christian from all walks of life, no matter what they are in, no matter what they are caught up in, no matter how their lives reflect, everybody says that they're a Christian, okay? So there must be a distinction, all right? From the beginning of time, since I've landed in these social media streets, the Lord called me out. I told you guys, I've been telling you that we are in the time where God is separating what? The wheat from the tear, right? Because we've grown, we've grown together for such a long time okay and that time frame god extended his grace hallelujah he yeah he extended his mercy hallelujah he gave a window of time for people to repent for for people to pivot for people to turn away okay now the lord is like time's up all right. The distinction has been and will continue to be made. OK, as we see, if you got eyes on your head, ears on the side of your head, OK, you pay attention to what's been unfolding uh, throughout the last couple of months. OK, we living in this exposure culture, but even within the so-called body of Christ, we have seen the exposure taking place. That is the separation. OK, that's the separation of the wheat versus the tip, all right? God has to make a distinction because his kingdom, his will must be fulfilled in the earth, all right? So I always tell you guys, don't get confused. Uh, don't think that it's chaos in the body of Christ. Don't think that it's confusion. No, this is by God's divine design, okay? Because he has to separate those who truly belong to him versus those who've been crying wolf, those who have been going through the process, all right? Those who have had a form of godliness but have denied the power of God for so long. All right. So the Lord is like, um, the time is up for that. I have to bring those out. Those who have, I've been processing on the backside of the mountain, which is some of you, those who I have been dealing with, those who I have been pruning, come on. And I've been cultivating them 
Now is the time, right? And now is the hour when the true church will make its arrival, okay? When the true church will arise from what seems to be the rubble, okay? Will arise from what seems to be the chaos. Hallelujah to your name. So let's dig into this topic, y'all, because I believe that there is a delusion Okay, there is a delusion, there is a spirit, um, a, a trickery. Yeah, let me tell you that the enemy is not your friend. Okay, the enemy, Satan himself, will lead you all the way to hell in delusion. All right, um, his main job and his main objective is to kill, steal, and to destroy. Come on, whoever will be willing to be killed, uh, to be uh, stolen, destroyed, okay, at corrupted, whoever, all right, that is his main objective, and he's going to do what it is that he, uh, what it is that he he does, all right. The enemy knows that his time is up. He knows that uh, his time will be up soon. That's why we see so much corruption going on. That's why we see uh, so much on the horizon, you guys. And uh, y'all keep me in your prayer because I have a prophetic word that I need to release that was kind of heavy. I was like, whoa, 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 Lord. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up, Lord. You know, but I told you guys a couple of weeks ago, like another elevation hit my life. Um, and so the, the elevation of the prophetic has expanded as well. You go. So y'all just keep me in your prayer because I'm working on that and I'm getting that together. Uh, you know what I mean? And some of the things that the Lord unfolds and he unveils, it's really heavy. Uh, but back to what we're talking about today. Um, there is a delusion that has I I'm not, it's not, it's not new. It's been going on. Okay. But I believe, uh, that we have to be very vocal. Those of us who represent God. And I believe, I don't believe, I know, you know, when we get into these, um, modes like a being very quiet about things and not wanting to offend and not wanting to speak up you guys god let me know like we have now there's a time where you have to exercise wisdom okay there is a time where you have to uh be obedient to what it is that god has called you to say or to release and when he's called you to release it but as people of god we have a duty okay to judge according to righteous judgment all right and nowhere in scripture does it tells us that we should be tucked off in a corner somewhere afraid to speak up against sin afraid to speak up against the things uh that offend god all right now please understand me because i'm not one you know to uh, uh to be in the culture of like abusing people and browbeating people and you know um you know how like i've talked about this stuff a lot over here how you know it's happened to me being preached on in sermons you know what i'm saying being abused from the pulpit by the the leaders and senior pastors and things like that i'm not in that business because we serve a loving god uh, but i think that those of us who have platforms who have uh, you know, God is expanding our reach. We have to speak up because there may be somebody out there who very well just might not know. Okay. Might not know. Okay. So can you be same gender loving homosexuality, homosexual and a Christian or as a, 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 a kingdom citizen? All right. First, I would say, uh, it's imperative that you be born again. Okay. It's imperative that you repent. It's imperative that you, uh, that you accept the Lord God into your heart and into your life. Come on, that you, uh, give him a chance to transform you and make you new. We cannot get through this life what I talk about the other day, the seven reasons why we need Holy Spirit, right? He is our helper, all right? You cannot get through this life without the helper, which is Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit keeps us. He sustains us. Come on. The things that our natural man will want to do, will want to fall into the sins of our fathers, our bloodlines, our generations, those things that the enemy is sitting and he's lying in wait, okay, hoping that we will fall in those same paths, we can overcome that 
by the blood of the lamb. We can overcome that by help of Holy Spirit. So what I would say to somebody who has this question, who's wondering, uh, you need the Holy Spirit. You need the infilling of the helper, okay? And it is the help and the strength of Holy Spirit that will help you overcome, that will help you and walk you down that process of deliverance. If this is something that you struggle with, uh, Lord have mercy, the, the perversion that plagues and riddles my bloodline. Listen, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, okay, I would probably be one that would be caught up in the same gender loving relationship because all, all, like just all, all, everybody, okay, have been molested, have been fondled with and things like that. So God is a keeper and he can keep us even from those snares and things that are waiting in the bloodline, all right? Um, but for someone that may say, um, you know, that may have the stance like, well, God loves everybody because you know, that's what people love. They love to use that. God loves everybody. He knows my heart. He knows, yes, he knows your heart. And let me hit you with this. The Bible says that the heart is desperately wicked. Okay. Uh, the word of God tells us that in our flesh, there dwells no good thing. Okay. Um, so for those that would say he knows your heart, yes, he knows what we're made of, which is why, hallelujah, he's sent his son, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, as the propitiation for our sins, our shortcomings, so that we could be restored. Hallelujah. So that we could be restored back to the father. Okay. Um, so if somebody is in this lifestyle, this is your lifestyle, this is your choice and you're comfortable there. I will tell you that you have to repent. I will tell you that you cannot make it to heaven being comfortable and being complicit in that lifestyle. Like we have some undoing to do. We got some unraveling to do, okay? Um, because even the, the narrative that Pearson was pushing um, about you know, same gender loving and, and the Lord loves everybody, which he does. But this man led people into a delusion. He led them into deception by allowing them to believe that they could uh, partake in this kind of lifestyle and yet see God just the way that they are. Okay. That they could partake in this particular lifestyle and, um, all is well. So we have a responsibility uh, to undo, to unravel that deception, that seed of deception that has been planted, come on, by somebody who had massive, massive, massive reach, okay? And sometimes we can say, oh, I don't got time to deal with that. But let me tell you, one day I was on Facebook and somebody had posted something shortly after his passing. And I saw people that I knew Oh my God, I saw people that I knew and it broke my heart who have fallen prey to this deception, a deceptive teaching of inclusion, you know? So if you guys have never heard of Carlton Pearson, uh, you know, he used to be on the Lord's side, but then he allowed his feelings and his emotions uh, to lead him down a pathway of deception, okay? And he started teaching a gospel of inclusion and a gospel of inclusion meant that, you know, everybody is all good, all right? The Lord loves you as you are and you're going to make it to heaven because guess what he started spinning the narrative that there was no such thing as a hell all right so we who are alive and remain all right we have a duty to speak up okay and uh there is no there is a difference because the lord this goes against the natural order of things you know a uh, sin is sin okay uh but homosexuality even in the word of god uh it's an abomination the scripture doesn't just call it a sin it calls it an abomination all right and that's not to say that any other stuff that we get caught up in is okay no but the lord categorized that as like listen this is against my natural order, all right? Uh, if we go back and we read in Genesis 19, excuse me, you guys, when it talks about a, a, a lot that was dealing with lot and when the Lord gave he, excuse me, him and his family, uh, the opportunity to leave, uh, to leave their town because 
the Lord was getting ready to destroy it because of the wickedness. And the Lord was getting ready to judge this region because of their sin. All right. You all go back and read Genesis 19. The angels came on the scene. Uh, Lot begged them to stay with him. I would accommodate you while you're here. And the people in the town were so jacked up and so messed up and just wicked and horny. They were trying to sleep with the angels. Okay. Uh, little did they know they were angels. All right. But trying to sleep with the angels who were men. Lot even offered them. I have daughters. Listen, he was saying, don't do this. Don't do this. I have daughters who are virgins. They have not been touched. Take them. They didn't want the girls. They didn't want the daughters. They wanted the men who Lot was housing uh, and accommodating in his home. All right. So the Lord gave Lot and his family a way of escape, gave them a chance to get out of that region before he destroyed it. All right. So I think that it's imperative that we speak up because there's a strong delusion that I have uh, I've noticed and it's getting worse, you know, as the, the years go on and time goes on. And it seems like that community with it, even within the churches, uh, they, and you know, now we have the churches that are simply uh, safe places for people who are a part of the LGBTQ community. You know what I mean? They have their own churches and houses, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, but I think we have to speak up. We have to speak up. I know I'm not the only one that has people in my family, you know, that are of that lifestyle. You know, they ask me tomorrow and I'm going to tell them the truth. I I'm not going to help send you to hell, you know, so we have to raise a standard and we have to to take a stand, all right? Because the delusion that I'm seeing, okay, is that people believe that they are still going to go to heaven. And I want you to listen. You got to repent. You have to repent and you have to turn. If anybody's under the sound of my voice and you are actively engaged in this lifestyle, you're actively like, you know, busy in the church and you sing on a praise team and sing in the choir and this church that you're a part of, they have no problem with it. I, I want you to first know that you need to run for your life, okay? You need to seek the Lord and you need to find a leader, somebody that will tell you the truth because you should be in no church and feel like you're safe in, in any kind of sin. But nevertheless, the, the lifestyle of homosexuality, okay? So my prayer is that if anybody runs across this video and this channel, that the Lord pricks your heart for you to repent, okay? That you know that there is time and there is space and while you yet have breath in your body, okay? Uh, God is gracious and he yet extends his mercy because he's still chasing after you. All right. Uh, God is, I was dwelling on the love of God the other day. You guys, we will never be able to fully comprehend that love. Okay. A love like no other, you know, we don't know that kind of love where you can offend the Holy Spirit. You can fall short time and time again, and God yet still loves us. All right. Now that don't mean that you can play him because you cannot play Holy Spirit. He's very intelligent. He knows the very motives of our heart. He knows the intention behind the things that we do. Okay. Uh, and he's omniscient. So we can never get one over on him. But the thing that blows my mind is that he yet loves us. He loves us despite of our frailties and despite our failures. Okay. So I just want to debunk the lie. All right. For anybody who has an ear to hear, you have to turn away. You have to, to seek out deliverance. Okay. Because I know sexual sin. I know, uh, being in the grips of something that like literally has a grip on your soul. You have to walk down the process of deliverance. All right. So you're going to have to speak with some people. You're going to have to get, get, uh, uh, seek out a deliverance counselor that can help you break free. You know, that can help you get to the root of why am I in this? Why uh, do I believe that this is okay? You know, because some of this stuff goes back way, way back. Like I told you, and my family, way, way back. The, I mean, when God started revealing to me um, 
just how strong perversion was in my family bloodline. I was like, my God, my Lord, you know what I mean? And it seems like also that it's a, a like an evil altar uh, that has been established where everybody in the family, you know, is just, ooh, child. You know what I mean? So we have to speak up about these things because it's not just uh, you, okay? It's not just I'm in this. This is what I choose to do. I'm enjoying this. It feels good to my flesh. If you have children, let me tell you, that's oh, that's a conversation for another day. You are literally giving the enemy legal access to destroy your children by way of perversion. You've opened the door. You've told him, come on in. Uh, uh, you can do whatever you please, enemy, in my bloodline. You could jack my children up. Uh, I once heard somebody say that once you open a door, to certain sins, certain indiscretions. You don't have a say so on what comes in that door. Let me say that again. Once you open a door to certain sins, certain indiscretions in your life, you do not have a say so as to whether or not what comes inside that door. All right. You can't say, uh, I'm, I'm going to be into women as a, a woman okay um and the enemy not bring with that you know like even stronger demons of perversion where you might start trying to figure out why am i looking at kids you know what i'm saying like it's just that deep that sound crazy don't it but perversion is just that deep how do you think people that become molesters and rapers what where do you think it comes from there is a seed of perversion that has been planted they have opened the door somewhere okay and that demon of perversion has now gone back and got some stuff even stronger to where they don't care they gonna take it okay if it's from a man a child a woman a donkey that's how strong that spirit of perversion is all right so that's why we have to be careful about the things that we open ourselves up to, okay? And I just wanted to be a voice, okay? Crying out in the wilderness to debunk the lie that uh, you can be a uh, Christian and you're going to make it to heaven even though you're in these covenants and these relationships because that is just not true. That is just not true. Okay. And I will hate for somebody. Listen, we need to be a people that will appreciate when people tell us the truth. I don't want nobody lying to me. And then I end up in hell somewhere. Okay. I don't want nobody lying to my children. I don't want them fall and pray to a gospel uh, of deception, like the gospel of inclusion or fall and pray to doctrines of devils. Y'all, we have to speak up. We have to cry aloud and spare not. We can't be afraid. All right. Look, listen, we can't. Now is not the time to be afraid. All right. We have to be bold soldiers for Christ. All right. So if you're wondering, if you're wondering, am I OK like this? No, you have to repent. You have to seek the Lord. You have to turn away. OK, it goes against God's natural order. He did not intend. He did not intend. How do we get here? Adam and Eve, the fall of man, and we just kept falling and falling and falling, okay? And continue to fall and fall and fall, all right? And eventually the Lord is just gonna be like, I got to come. I got to go get my people because this is just too much. It's too much, all right? So I love you guys so much. Tell the truth to people that you love. I hope that if someone hears this video that it offers you great, great clarity. Um, there is a time and a space because our human mind, will, and emotion, which is our soul, is very, very strong, okay? Uh, we can trick, it's so strong, which is why we need the Holy Spirit. This is go. I'm a pen that video. Go back and listen to that video. That's why we need Holy Spirit, because our flesh and the spirit of God constantly at war. Have you ever, even though you're filled with the spirit of God, just felt the war on the inside of you? I know I ain't by myself, even if it's just something as simple as I need to go pray, but you can feel like your flesh, like, no, you're not going to pray. You're not going to get in the secret place. I dare you. It could be something just as simple. 
our flesh is constantly at war with the spirit of God. Okay. But we have to press. That's why we need his help. That's why we need his strength. That's why we need his guidance. And he is a keeper. It doesn't matter what has been established in your bloodline. Listen, God can be, you can be the very one that God calls to be the bloodline breaker. All right. You could be the very one that the Lord anoints to say, listen, no more of this and no more. We're not going to travel down this road of everybody being perverted and everybody being molested. You know what I mean? And there's so that's not just the only generational curse. There are several. All right. But I think that we just need to be honest. OK, we need to deal with that elephant in the room. I don't care uh, they because they people in that lifestyle get very offended, you know, and they be ready to go. But, you know, listen, we got God of the angel armies backing us and we just have to tell the truth. All right. You guys, I love you so much. I hope that this word ministers to somebody. My prayer is that if somebody is confused about this and God may be dealing with you, uh, that this word uh, ministers to you. And I hope that you feel the love and the genuineness and that it prompts you to seek the Lord out even the more and that it seeks you to turn away uh, from that lifestyle because God has a work, a plan, and a purpose for all of us. If you are alive and well, God has a purpose for your life. There was a purpose written over your life when you were in your mother's womb, okay? So we want to get to and want to fulfill and walk in the totality of all that it is that God has in store for us. All right. I love y'all. Have an amazing day. Share the video. If it blessed you, give it a thumbs up and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.